All right, well, hello, my fellow stock market drivers. I was just thinking we should take a quick look at gold tonight because all of a sudden, uh, gold is back in play. So this isn't really trade recommendations. It's more about how you can get exposure to different sectors. But we always like to do a couple of cool facts due to its high value. Most Did you know that most gold discovered throughout the history is still in circulation? It's kind of weird, but it's true. 75% of all gold in circulation has been extracted, which I guess means mine, since 1910. So 75%. The largest gold nugget ever, man, I wish I had discovered this one, the Welcome Stranger. I guess if you get a nugget, it's big enough, you name it. And it was discovered in Australia back in February of 1869. 20, 10 by 25 inches, 200 and or actually 2,248 ounces of gold. Two inches below the surface. All right, doesn't that make you seem jealous, right? You want to be like, man, I wish I had discovered that gold. Like, just like tonight in Connecticut, we got the the mega millions. Well, you probably have it too, but it's uh, it's like it's over a billion dollars now. So if you come back to my site or if you come back to Stock Market Jobber and you don't see us anymore, well, it's probably because we won the mega millions, but I would think you should come back anyway. It's probably not going to happen. We can't hope that it does, but all right, so let's move on. All right, so here is gold and gold futures. This is a futures contract. If you don't trade futures, you don't need to worry. There are ways to invest in gold without being a futures trader. You can buy physical gold. You can buy gold company or companies that make gold or, well, I guess they don't make gold, but they just extract gold. But let's just look at some basic uh <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Some basic market principles. One of the principles we talk about a lot here at Stock Market Jobber is that levels that were support, like this level right here, can become resistance. I'm, I didn't make this line big enough, but why would the support level become resistance? Well, investors who bought here were upset when it went down, assuming they didn't sell it up here. So a lot of these investors become remorseful buyers and they want to get out, but they don't want to lose their money. So they tell themselves, if it gets back to where I bought it at, I'm going to sell it so I can get out of break even. So a lot of times support becomes resistance. And you're probably asking yourself, like, well, what the hell does that have to do with me? Well, it, it has a lot to do with you because if you want to trade, you need to know where the, where the important levels are because... Support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, support remains support, resistance remains resistance. It tells you where to put your orders at. For example, just say down here you said to yourself, you know what, I'd like to buy gold if it gets to $1,600 an ounce. All right, I'm just going to guess. If it gets to $1,600, that's fine, I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to be aggressive, I'm going to wait for the sellers to come to me. Look at where the support level formed. 1625. So maybe you were right. Actually, you weren't right. Or actually, it is not a maybe. You were totally right. <laughs> so you were right that gold was going to go higher, but you missed out on it for $25. You know, if it's something that's trading at 1600. So by knowing where the levels are, you know where to place your sells, your buys. I mean, it's not as good to buy gold at 1600 as it is to buy 1625, but it's better than missing it now that gold is 1902. So this is gold, and if you don't actually buy physical gold, and I, I mean, I don't know why people buy physical gold. I, I can see why you're like a, maybe a coin collector or something. But, you know, if Armageddon comes, you know, no one's going to care about gold. People are going to care about water, loaded weapons, uh you know, bottles of water. All right, enough of that. I'm not going on a conspiracy theory tonight. So we'll just go through this pretty quickly. But if you want to get exposure to gold, and you don't actually want to buy the metal, because you don't want some, like, militia group raiding your house when Armageddon comes, you can buy this ETF, SLPD. It's the Spider Gold Trust. It, it's designed to track the price of gold. And one of the things that we talk a lot about here at the stockmarketjobber.com is the importance of certain price levels. And we can see on every chart, 
we see psychology. You're not just looking at a chart. You're not looking at tea leaves, astronomy, or I mean astrology. You're looking at human psychology. Why would gold be more worth more here than here, but less than here and less than here? There's really no reason. It's not like any new gold mines came online. It's because of psychology. It's investor perceptions. So we had resistance here. We had resistance here. This is market memory. See down here, there was like support here, support here, market memory. Sometimes these important support and resistance levels can remain in attack for a long time. So we had support became resistance. This is because of buyer's remorse. People who bought here, a lot of them still held onto it. They regret buying when it goes lower. They tell themselves they're going to get out of break even if they can. So they place their sell orders at the same level they had their buy order at. If there's enough of these remorseful buyers placing their sell orders, the level becomes resistance. And that's what happened here. Down here, we can see a different kind of market memory. A support level becomes a support level. Or I should say remains intact for a while. Right? Support, support, support. It's what we call market memory. For some reason, and I don't understand why, and you will never will, so just kind of forget it, because I don't even understand it. And I've been doing this for decades. Some levels are more important than others. It's just really just how markets function. All right, let's move on. But again, actually, let me review. If you want to get exposure to gold, but you don't want to actually buy the actual physical metal and have it in your house, you can buy this. It's just like an, e an ETF. It's a, Well, it is an ETF. It's a stock trades. You know, you can just go to your brokerage, buy it, GLD. It trades just like a normal stock. It's an ETF. Now, if you're really confident that something gold will move your way a lot of investors or traders get into this if you think gold is going to go higher well this is the gold miners etf it's an etf of a bunch of it w which means it's a an aggregate investment of a bunch of small gold miners okay so in and of themselves gold miners are kind of risky because a lot of them are in south america and they, not that there's anything wrong with South America, but a lot of them are in South America and, you know, they're one hit wonders. They have one mine. So if that one mine goes out of business, you're going to lose or whatever. But the gold miners ETF is diversified. It invests in a lot of them. And here's the thing. If you think gold is going to go up and you're on the right side of the trade, well, maybe gold goes up 5%, but this would probably go up 15%. So if you want to trade gold and you think it's going higher this is a good thing to look at instead of buying the actual gold or gld you buy this now if you're on the right side of the trade it's going to go up much more of course if you're on the, the wrong side of the trade it's going to go down faster but this is not a trading recommendation thing here i'm just this is a little bit of education so i just wanted to see that now if you are super and a lot of the millennials like say that super and perfect this is the gold miners index etf nugt this is designed to go up twice as much as gold does it uses leverage you don't need to worry about that that all goes on behind the scenes but in terms of the etf if gold goes up or i'm sorry if the gold miner index goes up i don't know roughly say 10 percent, this will be up 20 percent so if you're a millennial who's a super perfect trade idea, and I'm sorry, but uh, if you're super perfect, well, and you got the right side of the call, this is the way to go. If you're really super duper, ooper, super duper um, perfect, you could buy options on this. And, you know, overnight you can make 10, 20, 30, 40, actually 300, 400, 500%. So, again, this is not a uh, recommendation. It's just a lesson to learn how to get some exposure. Now, say you're on the other side of the market. Say you think things are going to go down. Well, you don't need to be a futures trader. You don't need to go short. You could just invest in an inverse ETF. An inverse ETF moves inversely to the market, right? That's why they call it inverse. So, if you think gold... Or, um, if you think gold miners are going to go down and you buy this ETF, it will go up. And not only will it go up, it will go up about twice as much as 
Gold goes down. In other words, if gold is down 5%, this will probably be up 10%. So one of the things we like to teach here is that there's always a way to gain exposure. To Well, actually not always, but like maybe 95% of the time, there's a way to gain exposure. So don't be afraid of bear markets. Don't think you can't get exposure to, to uh, commodities. And that's it, everybody. I will see you back here soon. Thank you.